Okay, so in this video, I am going to be wrapping this 30 North Big Flex body. Uh, if you're into the uh, low C trucks, this is a great body because it fits a bunch of different chassis and applications. So uh, without any further ado, let's get started. So the things you're gonna need, uh, this will be covered in the instructions that's included with your graphics when you get them. Uh, but I'll just do a quick rundown of what I'm using here. Uh, it's got a El Cheapo Wagner heat gun. I have an X-Acto knife. I have uh, some 91% isopropyl alcohol. And I had a clean rag, but I used it and threw it away already. And this guy here is called ProBond. You can buy it on Amazon. Uh, you can also use 3M Primer 94, or you don't have to use them at all. Uh, the, the 3M Primer 94... You can buy in a pen stick, which you sort of snap open and there's a little vial inside and it lets the product come out of a felt tip and then you can put it on. Uh, you can also buy it in a pint container, which is probably what you'd want for something this size. Uh, the Pro Bond here that I've got is, is the same, uh, same type of product. It's just a different company. So you're probably saying, well, what, what's that stuff for? Um, this type of plastic, what it, it, it's sort of hard for the graphic to stick to it uh probably asking well what's that pro bond that i'm using here for um and the reason is when you get these unbreakable plastics like this they have very very low surface energy and you can see just by looking at this truck how it's sort of a pitted plastic so when you get these little so when you get these little valleys and peaks you know in this pitted plastic, which is really what it is. If you put it under a microscope, it, it's not quite even. The initial bond strength is not as great as if you were to put it on, let's say a piece of aluminum, which is nice and smooth. So what the uh, Primer 94 does, and I'll put a link up above here, is it sort of levels that out. When you put it on, opens up the pores, a little, the plastic a little bit, it increases the bond by maybe 20 or 30% at most. Um, I went through with this Pro Bond and I just used a 3M rag and I went over all of the curves, especially because this product is pretty thick. And when you're dealing with this pitted plastic and you really want it to bite, the hardest spots is going to be where it's really stretched, you know, over curves. So I just took my rag and I dipped it in there and I just went over it. Um, it's a very fast evaporating, very quick evaporating uh, product. So you'll put it on, it'll look wet, and it'll just, within seconds, it, it'll evaporate off. Um, again, you don't have to use it, but if you want to, you can either use the Pro Bond uh, 3M Primer 94 in, in the pen stick form uh, or the pint form. And you can use um, a clean rag, an undyed rag. What I mean by that is don't let it be yellow, you know, don't have a yellow one. Let me get you one here, I'll show you. If you use a colored, a colored rag like this, the color can come off of it onto your application because this stuff's pretty strong. Make sure you wear rubber gloves and a respirator. Um, beyond that, this is going to be a primarily dry application. And what I mean by that is most of the dirt bike graphics I sell, a lot of the RC graphics that are done on Lexan bodies, uh, I recommend uh, floating it on soapy water. Uh, you can probably see that in some of my other videos. Um, but with this situation, we don't want to get that water trapped in these pits here. These little, you know, micro pores, I guess you could call them. Because it'll be harder for it to get that initial bond. I may do a wet application with a hinge method on this piece here. And uh, that'll be a good demonstration because that can come in handy to get your pieces aligned where you need um, without an initial quick... A high tack bond so we can wet it down float it around a little bit and then what we'll do is when, when we're happy with it we'll hinge half of it back dry it with the heat gun and then hinge it back down and what that'll do is it'll allow us to float it around and get it in place and then make our final contact whereas as compared to trying to make a final contact with just laying it straight down which can be hard on some of the bigger pieces so we'll see how it goes this is my first time wrapping a 30 north I just completed the template on it, and I actually have this body sold already um, to a good client of mine. 
And what he picked out was a red ruckus theme. Here it is. This is how it's going to show up on your doorstep. This is a red ruckus theme um, with a metallic flake finish. So let me turn the lights up here. Maybe I can get the metallic flake to sort of sparkle a little bit for the camera. I'll get it as close as I can here. And we'll just move it around. Eh, I guess it's showing up a little bit. It's hard to get metallic flake to show up. There you can see it just a little bit, I guess. It's hard to get it to show up unless you're out in the sunlight. I mean, it's there. You can see it a little bit there. See it sparkle? There we go. Got it. So we're going to put this on. I'm going to take you through the steps. Uh, when you get it, you can scan this uh, QR code with your phone and it'll bring you right to the this video. Uh, well, I guess if you're watching this video, you probably don't even need to know that, but there you go. Um, this is your overhead diagram here. Let me get it up so you can see. This is your overhead diagram. And what that is, is if you're looking at the truck from the top down, it shows you the shapes of each piece, where they go. And you just basically look at it and say, okay, clearly that's the hood. Where is that shape? That shape's right here. So you can take that and you put it on your hood, okay? There's some extras on, like most of the kits, there's usually extras here. You can bling things out if you want. Uh, but uh, I guess with that said, we'll, we will get started. And I think what I'm gonna do is start with um, each side here. They're pretty easy. And then we'll see uh, how we go uh, beyond that. Uh, I've already, let me get this stuff out of the way here. I've already gone ahead and prepped this I've used my 91% alcohol uh, with my clean rag, removed all my oils, you know, dirt, grease, all that stuff. If you have any oils or grease on these bodies, you, you cannot proceed. Um, so make sure you clean it really, really well, okay? And like I said, I've already done my Pro Bond or Primer, uh, Primer 94. So without any further ado, let's get started here. Okay, so I'm just gonna move my heat gun over there. And I'm gonna need to find my X-Acto knife. It is right here. I've got a nice new blade in there. And I'm gonna pull off the first piece. I'm just gonna put my X-Acto knife in it and just pull it off. And before I get started, I just wanna show you how thick this product is. So you can see, even with these cutouts here, it still holds itself up. It's not quite as thick as the motocross stuff. And the reason for that is because we're scaling down. If you get too thick, uh, it doesn't look as good. Uh, there's a fine line, in my opinion, where too much thickness just looks like overkill. Um, but with the weight of this machine and the thickness of these graphics, um, you're going to be perfectly fine for, you know, rollovers and things like that. Um, so let's get started here. Just looking at my application. Hopefully I've got this aligned. Let me just check my camera here and make sure you guys can see that. Oh yeah, we're right in line here, okay? So I'm just gonna line this up with these vents as my first priority, just like that. And I'm gonna hold it up, okay? I'm just gonna use my thumb and my finger and just get something down so I've got a nice pivot point. So that's down. Stuff's really, really sticky, okay? So when it does grab, it's going to grab pretty good. You can see for me to pull that up, it's really holding back. Now, one of the things about pulling a graphic up off after it's stuck down, if you're getting a, good, a, a very quick initial contact, you can distort this nice level adhesive. And by level, I mean, let's say you were spraying a clear coat on a car. You know how when it initially hits the car, it's kind of orange peely as it starts to settle? It, the orange peel levels out or just self levels. This adhesive from the factory is sort of self leveled on there. And if you disturb that, you will see the result through the top side of the graphic. So try not to pull it back up if you can help it, especially on a dry apply. That does not apply to uh, a wet apply because you're not making an initial contact until you squeegee that, that product out. So just need to reach back here. I'm gonna grab my 3M cloth here. I'm just gonna wrap it around my finger. And the reason I'm doing that is just to reduce friction from my fingertip to the graphic. So I'm just gonna go back and forth in a sweeping motion 
And once this product is aligned right here, it should fall right into place for you. There's no special other tricks. Okay? That looks pretty good. So now, this isn't quite down back here because I didn't push it down. So I'm just going to pick it up. And again, I'm going to go in this sweeping motion. And the reason for that is so that I get the air out. I'm going down like, like in a roll fashion. And then at the end, I'm just going to use my finger and go like that. And that looks pretty darn good, I think. Okay. So here's where we are. Okay. Sparkles looks pretty. I don't see any air pockets at all. If I had an air pocket, I've got one of two choices. If it's close to the outside, I'd probably try and quickly lift this up, get it out, put it back down. If it's in the middle here somewhere, I'd recommend just trying to pop it, warm it up a little bit with the heat gun. Not much, just a little bit. And try and just push the air out and you'll see the air sort of come out the side there, okay? Let's do the other side now. Now on this graphic sheet here, there's a yellow notice and you can read it. And what it says is, leave yourself a 1 16th inch gap approximately on all edges. That is so this thick product does not overlap uh, this uh, the other graphic. If it were to overlap, let me just get this started here and then I'll, I'll tell you what I've, I'll give you a demonstration. If the graphics were to overlap, because they're so thick, you would have this sort of step up over the graphics, okay? And what happens is you get a little, like a, a cavernous area in there. And that is just a pathway for contaminants to get in when you're in mud or water. And what that will do is it'll slowly work on making that graphic fail. So that's why we leave a nice clean gap around all edges, okay? And as long as uh, you keep it even, it looks good. Like a car door, for example. Uh, you know, car doors have a black gap between the body panel and the door. And we don't notice it because it's nice and even. It's the same concept with this stuff. Okay? Done. So now we're going to move on to this piece here. And I think I'm going to do the hinge method just to show how it's done. Let me grab my soapy water mix here. Okay. So I'm going to shake up my soapy water. One of the things about the soapy water stuff is the soap actually breaks down uh, after a while and you can't, you can't see the suds as much. So if you have the soapy water laying around, make sure that uh, it's not as dull as mine. I'm going to sop up a little bit of this because a lot of that moisture is going to get trapped in those pits okay so you don't need a ton but what we're trying to achieve here is we're trying to achieve the ability to put this graphic on here and not have it stick full bore okay you can already see i'm having some trouble because it's just so floppy so i'm just going to get it down i need some more water just a little bit more there what this is going to do is give me uh, a little bit more time to get this aligned. And it's important to get this piece aligned because the art needs to register to some degree. Okay. I'm focused on my holes here. And now I can bring this over here. Focused on my holes. If the holes are lined up, everything else will line up. Unless your body is distorted or cut different from the factory, which it shouldn't be. Okay. Everything looks good. Now you can see here, this is designed and cut to sit down in here. And now when I do that, it pulls it down a little bit from this lip and it'll give you your nice clean 16th that we talked about. Give me one second so I can find my squeegee. Aha, got it. Okay, talked about the hinge method, right? I know it's down now, everything's centered. I'm gonna hinge it back. I'm gonna take my heat gun. First thing I'm going to actually do is take my clean, clean, operative word clean, rag, and I'm going to dry the hood the best that I can on this side only, okay? Just like this. Awesome. Now, 
the residual moisture I'm going to evaporate out with the heat gun. And there's going to be some on the uh, graphic. Hold your heat gun back so you don't, you don't want to get it too hot. You just want to keep that warm air moving over top so you can softly, delicately evaporate out that moisture. If you notice that it starts to fold down too much, that means it's getting too hot. Just take a break. Let it cool off, okay? That looks good. I can still see I got some moisture on there, but that's okay. It'll, it'll evaporate out. What I'm doing, what I'm doing right now is I'm letting this cool uh, a little bit because if if it's too hot, it'll be easy for me to stretch it, and I don't want to stretch it because it's cut so perfect. I want it to maintain its semi rigidity so that it'll fall right back into place the way I want it to. So I'm going to take my squeegee, and this is just falling right back into place the way I want it to because this is holding it using the hinge method. Now it's definitely not going anywhere because I just put that down. I'm gonna cheat it just a little bit here. That looks good. Okay, looking good. It's still a little bit warm, so I was able to get that turn to go down there uh, without any major problems. Now I'm gonna work on this. The objective here is to get, you want to get the valley down first before get, letting that adhere. Because if you don't, you're putting a lot of uh, tension pressure on the valley here and it could pop up. Okay? So just make sure that's down. If you need to, you can add a little bit of heat. Okay? I don't see a single air bubble over here. I got lucky, I guess. So now I'm just going to do the same thing on this side. Okay? Here we go. And I can just dry it out. Good. And now I'm just gonna evaporate off this side of the graphic. And I'm gonna let it cool. You can see I got it pretty warm there, so it started to buckle. That's no big deal. Uh, like I said, I'm just going to let it cool here for a few seconds and then we will move on. It does not take long for this to cool so long as the body didn't get hot and it didn't. So, okay, so here we go. I'm going to take my squeegee Let me back this up so I know it's in frame and I'm just going to roll it. What I'm doing is I'm just sort of eyeing this, eyeballing this up here. Still lands perfect for me and... I'm just going to peel that up just a touch, and I'm going to pull this tight and hold it so I can make sure I'm sitting where I want to. There it is. And follow through with getting the air out just like this. Okay. Looks great. I'm going to work this down. Now, I want to show you here on the front. I already pushed it down. I should have taken my time. You can see here, there's a relief cut. Because this is sort of a compound curve, it has a slight arc this way and it definitely rolls this way. You're gonna get a little ridge in the middle here. Well, the reason for this relief cut is to let that ridge settle down, okay? So now I need to follow up with some heat, which is gonna soften the product and let me really get it in there. So we're gonna warm it, and when we warm it, it softens the product and the adhesive, and what happens then is that adhesive can really get into those little pockets and grooves that we want it to. Go back over that. The 30 North Big Flex Bot is probably gonna be one of the easiest installs. Um, it, it's not hard to do as long as you follow the directions. As you can see, I mean, it's just effortless. You, you just lay it on there and there's something that will help you align it and you just plow forward with it. So here we are. We've got the hood done. Looks pretty good. Uh, the artwork lines up perfect, okay? Everything's taken care of for you. You don't need to worry about that. Let's move on to this piece here. Again, 
This piece, uh, what I decided to do was cut out their logo so that it sits nice and flat for you. Because again, if it were to sit over top this, you'd get air pa uh, pockets stuck in there. It just wouldn't look good. So I've taken the time to do that. And uh, I think it's gonna result in a much better pro product than what else, the other products that are out there. Okay, so I need to pluck this off. And when I take it off, I'm gonna leave the cutout, the, the, uh, the logo behind. And I'll show you what I mean here as soon as I get it off. Okay, so here we are. We've got it off of there. Now you can do, I think I'm gonna do a, another wet apply here. Uh, just to get it going and then I'm gonna hinge it up like I did but see see what happens it's touching and I, because it's wet I can pull it right off okay so you don't need to um, worry about it sticking and then having to reset it and messing up the graphic or the adhesive but look how nice and clean that thing lays on there it is just cut really well you won't have to fight with anything I've got a beautiful 16th inch gap there my gap is there these are overcut so that they fold down. Okay, see how that's done? And then we're actually gonna come back and put the 30N in there to fill in the artwork, okay? So what I wanna do here is I wanna pull this up halfway or just a little bit. First thing I'll do is just sort of dab dry this. Okay. And then I can warm this up to evaporate that soapy water. And now because this is laying here and that contact friction is holding it, I can just lay this back down in a dry form. You see that? And then I can come back with my towel and press it in. And on something this intricate and small, you're gonna wanna do a press down in like this as compared to a push because if you happen to grab a corner of the graphic here, it could pull it up, okay? Again, see how I'm able to pull that up because I did a wet hinge method. I'm going to dry it. I'm going to evaporate this off. Okay. I'm going to use this to sort of help me roll it back down. There we go. Again, this isn't something you can either squeegee or rub back and forth. You got to come in here, support it from behind. You could probably you can rub it in some areas, but just be be cautious um, that you don't pull up one of these corners where it's cut out for their logo. Okay. So a combination of pushing and a little bit of rubbing there, and then I'm gonna have to heat this up to to get this wing to fold down for me. It's warm it's maintaining its warmth and while it's warm I'm gonna take my squeegee and just fold it right over look how beautiful that folded over for me there okay this doesn't want to uh, set down for me very well so I must have some moisture in there so I'm gonna get my heat gun and sort of just get underneath there a little bit evaporate it out and then just keep keep working it until it sets down so that wasn't too bad. That was sort of my first or second attempt at it there, and it, it sat down for me. Let me get this up here so you can see. If it doesn't sit down or you start to see these pull back up, you just got to get back underneath there with the heat gun, warm it up, get the moisture out. Okay, and down we go. And down we go. And down we go. And I'm just going to follow it with my thumb. I'm going to warm this up a little bit. Got a little bit of moisture on this corner. There we go. Okay. Looking good. Let's get all these tiny pieces in. <clears throat> okay. I need to pluck out the middle here. I'm going to do a standalone dry apply on this on these letters. The ticket here is to get that 16th inch gap. Easy peasy. If I can find my exacto knife here. 
There it is. I just need to lift this upper part of the N up here and reset it. Just like this. It's a little thin, so it has a mind of its own. Kind of fell over to the left. And just like a pinstripe, I'm just going to follow it just like that. Okay? See that? Now I need to get the O. It's fighting me a little bit here. There we go. And we're going to lay the O down just like that. I'm sorry, the degree sign. I guess I'm not quite to the O yet. And now we're going to pull up the zero. I called it an O, but I guess it's a zero. Again, easy peasy. Can't mess it up. You just pull it up, stick it down. All the hard work has been done because this is an absolute pre-cut to fit for the 30 North Big Flex body. There's the middle piece. And now we just need the three. Pull that off of here. And we'll set it down nice and easy. And that's it. Okay, there they are. You can hardly even tell they're there at this point. Move my seat down over here so I have some more room. And I will move some of these chemicals out of here so you guys can see. Let's do these vents here. Um, let's see, these go over here. You can't mess these up either uh, because they're all sized different and the artwork pretty much tells you where they need to go. The biggest trick with these is to just make sure that they fit correctly for you. You will need to use some heat on these. And if you get it just a little bit off, you can always just trim it. Uh, so I'm just gonna lay that there and then I'm gonna get the other one. I'm gonna get them all laid on and then I'm gonna heat them all up at once and then round the, the, the corners off. Looks good. Looks good, okay? So now let's get our trusty heat gun here. Just gonna warm it up. Just like that. And we're just gonna round it down. Just do a rolling action with your finger. Easy stuff. Uh, just make sure it's warm. And roll it down. Just like that, okay? Let's take a look at where we are. Looking good. Let's move on to the other side. Once I figure out where I put the other side, I put it over here. Same concept. I'm going to shove this up here. My art's nice and aligned. I'm a little bit too far down, so I need to go up just a touch. That's better. Okay. Grab the next one. Looks good. And then the final one. Same concept, I gotta heat it up. And just roll it over with my finger, just like that. Roll it over while it's warm, roll it over. Roll it over and roll it over. A little bit more heat here, just to touch up some of these spots. Okay, we're basically done with the 
the meat of the hood, we have a couple little stripes here. Let me just make sure my camera's still rolling. Let's get those stripes on. They are fairly straightforward. I'll pluck them off and then we'll do a dry apply. Okay. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is just gonna line up the artwork here. I apologize if I'm doing a reach over there and you can't see. Being that this is for a customer, I really gotta make sure I get it right. On some of my other videos, I have just did a quick job, which isn't perfect because I'm, I'm usually reaching over so you guys can see. So I apologize if on this one, I'm in your way once in a while, but I gotta get this right for this person because they are paying for the body and the graphics. And I'm gonna grab my other one. And same situation. Let me rotate here so you guys can see something. Keeping it, again, giving myself as much gap in between the other graphics as possible. Now it looks like I stretched this one a little bit uh, as I was putting it down. Because it's so thin, that can happen. So I'm just gonna pull it up and I'm just gonna round it the same shape with a pair of scissors. And there you go, okay? No problems. So here we go. I'm gonna shut the camera off and put a new memory card in there and then we're gonna come back and do the rest. Okay, I've reset my camera. I moved it back a little bit. Uh, so I could keep going. I gotta tell you, it started off really chilly in here. And then once I started up that heat gun, temperature shot up, it's 82 now. It was 72. So I had to put the air conditioning on. I hope I, you guys can still hear me. I'll try and speak up best I can. Let's move on to the rooftop. Uh, I'm gonna grab my X-Acto knife and I'm just gonna pull out the roof. There we go. And I'm gonna start on the back, I'm gonna line up the hole there, and then the hole there on that top side. Boy, that bites quick. And I'm gonna do a roll down here, like this. And it just falls into place. A little shy right there. Let's see if I can, I'm gonna warm this up just a little bit and stretch it. Just a little, that'll do, okay? Now before I go pressing down on it, I'm gonna grab my exact or my uh, squeegee and I'll go right up the center, air comes out, right out the front. Gonna lift this up just a little bit. I got a big old air pocket in there and it's out now, okay? See if I got, a, I got an air pocket here and there we go. Now, when I pulled that up, because this was only on here for 30 seconds, I'm not gonna get, I didn't get any distortion like I told you earlier on the adhesive where it's level. If this were to sit for 10 minutes and you went to pull that up, some of that adhesive would be left behind because it's starting to get into the plastic. And when you went to set it back down, it would look like it had you know, a terrible orange peel issue going on. So I'm just gonna roll that down a little bit there. I'm gonna get my heat gun, because I got a little bit of a roll on the front here. Just warm it up a little. I'm using my squeegee. Just push it down like this. I warmed up the back and I'm going to push it down just like that. Probably would be smart of me to turn this around so you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm sorry. Uh, as you can see, everything is cut pretty much perfect. We got our 16th inch gap all the way around. Got a little crease there. Came right out. A little bit of heat. Check my work here. The roof is done. It's that simple, okay? There we go. 
Okay, let's move on to some of this detail work out here. So I will pull this off. This is a nice big U-shaped piece here. And I'm just gonna, let me get this oriented again so you guys can see. Just gonna put this on. I'm leaving my, my expected 16th inch gap all the way around. Please be aware on this piece, the artwork isn't gonna line up across the entire turn. Um, when we work on our computers, we work in just that flat one dimension. And so we try to get the artwork to line up somewhere like in here. But as this piece comes around, uh, it's just impossible to design it really. I try to hide it the best I can with the, with the artwork and you'll see what I mean here when I get this down. Okay. It landed perfect. You can see it. I mean, I didn't have to do anything. So the artwork lines up in here. If I would have brought the design of this skull guy down across these two pieces, his teeth would have been split in half and part of the teeth would have been shifted this way and then the other part shifted that way. So when you get the uh, abstract artwork in this, you can hide it. Like this is just part of the flames behind him here. So I just made sure his teeth were up above there and the flames were down here. You can't tell, at least I can't. And I see this stuff every day. So I guess if I can't tell, most people aren't probably gonna be able to tell. Let's get this small piece here. Again, another easy install. Keeping my gaps even. This is one of those pieces that probably won't last as long as the rest of the kit. And the reason is it's right on the outside of the fender and it's got very thin properties. So you don't get as much of an adhesion real estate going on, if you know what I mean. It's included because I don't know what everybody's doing with their trucks. If you're just racing around a dirt track and you rarely flip, it'll be fine. But you know, if you're bashing up against things, this little piece here will probably be the first to go. Uh, this is pretty well protected because your first hit's going to be over here. Really won't take that out. Okay, let's go ahead and get this other piece. Again, more abstract artwork here because I can't get the artwork to align on these really curved pieces. These just made up right here. These two small ends and then the rest of it comes down. I'm just making sure my tolerances are okay. Excuse my reach here while I get this right. Okay, I'm gonna warm that up just a little. You can see I got a little bit of a ridge right there. Just wanna warm it up just a little bit and go like that. Okay, there we go. Now I'm gonna get these two front pieces in to find my knife. Start with the upper one. That way I can just register the artwork right down as I go. These go up just like this. Again, this is another one of those compound curves where things go this way and then this way. So the art's not going to be perfectly lined up only in one or two spots and then it sort of fades out. But again, can't really tell. And then we'll grab the next piece. Now this artwork will line up because these two pieces are designed in line. And you can see, I'll back myself up here, you can see that all lines up. There we go. Cool. I'm gonna save this side for when I speed up the film because you probably don't want to watch me do it again. Okay. In the meantime, let's move on to something bigger and better like this top piece here. Okay. I'm just going to lay it down again. I've got these hole cutouts that I can use as my guide. Just like this. 
Got to back this off just a little bit so I don't sit on that ridge too much there. Good. Gonna use a little bit of heat. And just feather it out with my squeegee. It's warm, so it's nice and soft and pliable. And we're bringing it right back, just like that. Looks great. I'm a little over here, so I'm just gonna, actually, that's right where it needs to be. It's just a shadow I'm seeing there. I'm gonna grab my next piece. This piece I'm gonna line up right here in the front. There's a nice U-shaped or a J-shaped cutout there. Just like that. And I'm gonna keep my gap nice and even as I come back through. You can use your finger just like this to, looks like I have a little imperfection in the plastic here from the factory. So what I wanna do is before I put that down, I just want to give it a little shave off there. It's like a little dimple and it's showing up through the graphic. There we go. Now I can't see it. Good. And we're just going to bring this right back like this. Awesome. Okay. I don't see any air pockets. We're looking good. There's a little piece here. Looking for my knife, looking for my knife. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna reach back and get this little piece here. And excuse my reach. Just gonna put it on there quick and then I'll show you what I'm up to. There we go. Okay, there we go. Here we are. Let's do these little pieces here next. And it appears as though I need this guy here. like this. Let's see if I can get my camera right here. There we go. And really what we have left to do here is this underneath here and the door top. Okay. Let's do the bottom first. I pull it off. I'm going to struggle a little bit here to get this in camera and move this stuff. Okay, here we go. There's a little cut here. You see it right there? And then one at the bottom. Those are relief cuts because this can go back. This goes back underneath there at a pretty hard angle. So I'm holding it tight. i got to get up underneath here. And the lines should fall right into place for you. We need to keep that 16th inch gap off this beveled edge. Okay, and we did. It looks pretty good. I got it on there enough that it's gonna hold itself. So I'm gonna lift it up and I'm gonna I'm gonna squeegee the middle right down. Squeegee the middle right down and squeegee the middle right down. And now I can work this way, just like this. Okay, got a little sticker stuck on my squeegee there. Fold this up so I can see what's doing up here. Looks good. And the same thing back here. Gonna need a little heat back here, but I'm just gonna get it started. There's relief cuts back here and they're there to help you because It'll want to try and ridge up on you a little bit. And you can see, see how these two cuts came together? 
So we're taking that memory out, which otherwise would have given you a wrinkle, <clears throat> taking the, the, the uh, graphic memory out where the wrinkle would be, and it's spread out in that relief cut, and they will pinch together and almost touch. Do not let them overlap. And if you have a little wrinkle in the, in the hole here, it's, so there's a relief cut and then a, a sort of a circle cut out, just heat it up a little bit. Like that. And just push it down. Just like that. Okay? This piece is done. Let's move on to this piece. It's going to be a little bit more challenging because we got to get up in here. Let's grab my knife. Okay. So this is going to go up here. I'm just going to lay that, try and get it somewhat in place there so that I can restart back here. I'm giving it a little bit of a pull here. It may break loose on me. It looks pretty good. Okay. Again, I'm maintaining my 16th inch gap. Squeegee this down. I don't like how wide my gap is there, so I'm just going to pull this up quick and tighten my gap a little bit for myself there. And you can see I did that. And then we'll just make sure it adheres down. And we're done. Okay, this will come down and cover that. And now we're on to the door. Okay, again, the door has two relief cuts, one there and one there, because we've got a pretty hard uh, bend. I'm gonna line up my door. There's the hole there and that hole there. Once you get it kind of tacked on, you can come back and then sort of finagle the fine details. Uh, I'm not pushing too hard on this thin strip down here because what can happen is when you get really thin pieces like that, they'll stretch as you push them and you'll end up with a big ripple. So you sort of have to divide it up um, and take your time with that, okay? And what we're left with th at this point is the bend at the top where it wants to go like this. So we're just gonna heat it up a little bit. Just like this. Not too much heat, just enough to warm it. And you can either use your finger or a squeegee. I like to use a squeegee because it's a nice flat level push. Okay, there we have it. All right. Beautiful. I don't think I've got anything else left to do on this other than the other side. And uh, with that said, no, I'm wrong. I have to do underneath here. See, I told you there's a lot of pieces to this kit. I apologize. Okay. Hopefully this is showing up. Again, align and stick. Leave your 16th to 1 8 inch gap. Looks good. Big flat area so I can use the squeegee. Done. I got one more piece here. Let's pull it off. Camera, you got that? Camera, talk to me, camera. There we go. just made it. I will say when you put these washers in, the diameter of the, of the hole of the washer is bigger than the screw. So if your washer shifted a little bit and the graphic wants to come down on top of the washer because of that, just either warm up the graphic a little bit and stretch it over or loosen up your screw and move your washer over. Okay. Nice artwork registration all the way through. Let's get a good look at this here. 
That's nice. Okay. I'm going to complete this project and leave the camera on and I will speed it up so I don't bore you too much and then we'll take a final shot of the, of the finished product, okay? Okay, here we go. This is the 30 degree north, big flex body for the Losis, uh, with the Dark Side Studios ruckus wrap with the upgraded metallic flake finish. Uh, turned out perfect, I think, as far as perfect can be on a body that's as flexible as this. Give you guys the 360 tour here. Everything fit really well. I think the client will be really happy with this. And uh, you know what, you can get your own, put it on yourself. It took me less than an hour to do all this. So figure maybe an hour to an hour and a half. Um, here it is from the front. Uh, I think there's gonna be maybe a dozen themes uh, on the website. This is the ruckus theme, like I said, and uh, I'll put a link below so that you can go directly to the low C products and the 30 North will show up there. You can customize your kit. Um, you can add your, you know, race team name or whatever you want, if you want to on the graphics. So, uh, thanks for watching. And until next time, keep it upright.